and welcome to Access and to the second of two parts of my interview with Roy Staub, a site sculpture artist. And uh, Roy, I, I, you gave me a tremendous review here from a Philadelphia Inquirer, is it? Yes, it came out last Sunday. Uh-huh. And it talks about uh, site sculptures. And they had five people, but they say that uh, five artists, but Roy Staub of Wisconsin, you're from Milwaukee, right? From Milwaukee, yes. Yeah, Roy Staub of Wisconsin is the commanding presence. You know, Roy, I, I, I know we talked a little bit about this last week, but there's this beautiful sculpture that you have now over in Northwest Harbor, between Northwest Harbor and Mile End, the end of Mile End Road. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've advised some friends who went to see it, and they were just absolutely enchanted by it, really thoroughly impressed. And I'm thinking, you know, my, my grandchildren are never going to get to see Roy Staub. They're just going to read reviews 50 or 60 years old about Roy Staub. I mean, tell me again, what is the point of doing something beautiful and then having it wiped out? I, I think it, it's, it's something about the preciousness of time in this moment. That sounds like pretentious art critic talk to me. <laughs> the, the, the what? The preciousness of the time? Of the time, yes. The yeah. moment. The preciousness of the moment. Okay. Yes. That's the best I can say. All right. Because I made it for now. I made it for that site. And, it's, and next year or the year after when I come back again, I'll make a different piece, maybe at the same site, because it's a good site. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you know, we were also talking last week about how every, everything being in the moment, and I'm working on a book. And I notice that if I get an idea when I drive along, or an, even, even an idea with the phraseology, I have to pull the car over right away and write it down. I can't, it can be incredibly vivid to me. And then the next second, it can be gone. Gone. And, yeah. and I'll never get it back. And if I think of the general idea, I won't get it back with the same quality. I mean, is this happening with you all the time when you're, you know, when you're doing your work? Um. Let's run that tape now as we talk about it. Okay, there'll be a tape coming up in about a quarter of a minute. Go ahead. Okay, sure. Um, I have an idea, but I make the idea right there at the site. Generally, I draw it right there in the sand before I make the work. And, and then I can alter it. But I, I, the idea is down, I make the sketch. And then I go into the site to make the work, and I make it fit the site. Okay, now, now you're picking some rings. They're, they're pretty, that's pretty big. What, you, you say they're, um, what, what, what are you picking there? These are Phragmite reeds. And, and uh, what we're watching now, that's at Fresh Pond, about 10 years ago. 10 years ago at Fresh Pond. Don't yeah. look at it. You know. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's at Fresh Pond 10 years ago. And I, but I picked the same reeds at Northwest Landing, or nearby Northwest Landing. And you say you use weeds that are described as useless? Or, you yeah, know, uh, um, because if they were precious, I couldn't pick them. Uh -huh. uh, and, and they're considered invasive. I don't care about that. Mm -hmm. I really needed a material to use. And, and I don't use the green ones. I use the ones from last year because they work. Those are pretty tall. They, must, they, they look to be over 10 feet tall. Yeah, sometimes they're 12 feet tall. And right. I look for the big, fat, heavy ones to make the armature to weave the line into it. Okay, now here you are with Alexander Branyan. Yes. Okay, and, and uh, you, you have that sketch laid out there. And that sketch doesn't look like much. I mean, it looks like two circles that are sort of partly inside one another. That's the, the basis for the work. That's the line drawing. And, uh, and I'm going to be now inserting uh, the reeds into those lines. Mm -hmm. Because actually, that's the drawing. But I'm, when the tide comes in, I'm drawing actually in space. Okay. And I'm, concer I'm, con I'm concerned about drawing in space. I'm doing a drawing. And the reflection works with it when the water's there, when it's the right time. So the tide is going to be coming in. Yes. And that's going to be covering a substantial portion of it. Is that it? Um, Yes, if, if the tape would run farther than this one, in the early time, I would make the, the line my eye level, because that's mm -hmm. where I thought it would be best. Now, uh, over the last five years, I've been making, making it lower, because, so it lasts longer and it's stronger. Mm -hmm. I went out today at the piece here on Northwest Landing to see how it is. At 2 o'clock, it was low tide. Mm -hmm. I photographed it anyhow, because mm -hmm. that's how it is. And I'm so happy when I come around the corner to see it that it's in place yet. And because the wind can take it down, the birds can take it down, or man will take the it down. The birds can take it down. Oh, yeah. The, the house swallows migrate and sometimes land on top of it. Mm -hmm. And they do it very quickly all at one time. It's, it's a flock. Mm -hmm. and, and then the piece is broken. And, then, and it comes down with the house swallows. With the house swallows, the two or three on each branch. Um, there. So that could happen tonight? Anytime. And that's it. Then the story's over. Or unless over. I go back and fix it. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, okay. <laughs> you know, man is there, man can repair. I'm man sorry, what did you say? Man is there, he can repair. Uh -huh. But I created it, I can restore it, I can fix it, and, but it's easiest and best when I make it from scratch. Okay, now you have a, a philosophy, almost a theology, uh, wrapped around what you do in support of what you do. And what came first? the idea that this is something that would be wonderful to, to do, or you just wanted to do it and you didn't have a philosophy about it? It's just something you felt like doing. I think a philosophy is something you learn along the way. Okay. And I gotta be really honest. I, I, I just was doing a drawing. I, you just assumed? I was just doing a drawing. Mm -hmm. A drawing out in nature, and I had to figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I watched, and I learned from watching. And I spend lots of time there. And I also, when the piece is finished, I stay there and photograph it. I wait for the right time. Because I know I, I'm trying to hold on to it somehow. And, and photography does hold on to it. So the philosophy comes along. And then I realize I'm watching it. I'm meditating. I'm quiet. I'm a hyper person. I become very quiet at the work. And, and I watch what's around. I watch what those mar when, when do you relax? When do I relax? In the CD, I can't. But when I'm work, working and doing my art, I can focus on it, and I know what I'm doing. And I know I watch the nature. But it's intense work. Are you relaxing? You're relaxing in the, in the midst of your intense work? I am, yes. Uh -huh. Otherwise, I have a breakdown, I'm sure. <laughs> you, you say you're a hyper person. Um, you know, I could tell you what you remind me of, and you might not like it. Did you see the movie Amadeus? I did, yes. All right, you remind me of Mozart and Amadeus. I would love to be that Mozart okay, and Amadeus. Okay, all right, well that Mozart and Amadeus was uh, an airhead. Uh, he was a, uh, an adolescent, and you had no idea how this beautiful music could come out of this uh, hectic, intense person. And sometimes I have that feeling of you, you know, you, you, we're together and, 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 you're, and you're being like this and like an adolescent and you're here and there and everywhere. And then you start to talk, at your, talk about your work and I look at your work and you're just, it's just completely different, but it can't be different. You've got to be the one person. And, and that says, I think that's beautiful because that says to me so much about art, about the, you know, about the creative person, about it doesn't, it, sometimes it doesn't seem to matter how they appear on the surface, that something is coming up that they're allowing to come up. So oh, having I, given that discourse, <laughs> knock me down. All right, knock you down. Well, airhead, I'm not sure, but I think there's many facets to see things. So you, you can have a, a there's levels. Mm -hmm. and, and each person has their own experience. I have, I have a lots of experience uh, in, in living in certain ways. And I also like a, a, a fresh juvenile or young viewpoint uh, of focusing on life yet. Even though I'm getting old, I still want to have a fresh... How old are you? 63. Oh, okay. Oh, God, yeah. No, no. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I don't, get, don't expect <laughs> me to feel sorry for you. No, no, no. Uh, I'm still bumping you're along. Not feeling, you're not feeling sorry for yourself. No, no. I, I, yeah. I'm still vital, and I can do it. And sometimes, when I was 45, I thought, I can't do it. I can't go in nature anymore. It's going to be too much. Yes, I can. And I'm still going on. So I, I, I have this adolescent nature. I have my focus. I know exactly what I want when I'm doing it. Right, that's what I, my answer. Mm -hmm. Well, do you think about it a lot when you're sitting eating in a restaurant, or I mean, does it sort of cross your mind? Do you, do you find that ideas come to you if they do come to you, and you, you can't remember them according to what you feel? Do you write things down? No. Does it all stay with you visually? Uh, even I lose that. Huh? And, and my, my biggest fear is I'm going to reproduce the same drawing I did five years ago.